What whiskeys do you just not drink enough? Here's my five. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So I do not think I am alone in saying there are certain whiskeys in my collection that I just don't drink enough. It's happened that as I put more and more things in the hutch, there are certain whiskeys that, though I consider them very, very good and do genuinely enjoy them, I just don't gravitate toward them. Sometimes they get shuffled off to the back of the hutch or put somewhere that isn't like as readily available and therefore I don't drink them as often. There are certain whiskeys that I simply just don't like that I have in my collection and that's why I don't drink them, but that's not the case here. So I actually took a little while earlier today, went through the hutch, looked at stuff that hey, why am I not sipping on this more? And figured I'd highlight those five whiskeys in this video for you. Would love to hear in the comments below, like what are the ones in your collection? Maybe it's time to take a little pause and just be like, why am I not sipping on certain ones? Have they been shoved to the side and maybe they deserve a little more spotlight? So that's what we're doing today, highlighting five whiskeys. So I'm going to start with a whiskey that I kind of highlight its brother a ton, but it is also very good, and that is the Bardstown Bourbon Company Origin Series High Rye Bourbon. This is the first one of the Origin Series that came out, and I absolutely love its brother, the Bottled in Bond Weeded, the Black Label one. Phenomenal for around 50 bucks. But right at that like 40 to $45 mark is this really, really solid whiskey. Also six years old, full of like orange citrus and spice for me, definitely has that high rye presence to it. And they nailed that kind of profile. Very, very good. I think the main reason it's it's still pretty full compared to the, the bottled and bond wheat is just, I like that one quite a bit, but that doesn't mean this one isn't also very enjoyable and offers something, you know, in that high rye category that's very, very solid. So definitely deserves a little more spotlight. Okay, so next is a really interesting whiskey that comes out on an annual basis. I grabbed it, was lucky enough to see it. It's also just a brand that gets overlooked and I just don't sip on it very often. And that is Kirkland Bottled in Bond Bourbon. So Kirkland is sourcing from 1792 Barton Distillery and they make good stuff. I mean, the small batch is pretty solid for especially around like 17 or 18 bucks this is very solid for like just over 20 and then the single barrel is like 30 bucks and it's great uh, this very solid full of banana full of brown sugar and again you can tell i just i do not sip on it very often it is one that just doesn't enter my mind often when i'm like oh i just want a solid pour and maybe it needs to start being a little more prominent in my headspace around Looking for a good whiskey to sip on on a casual day. Okay, so next on the list is one that just, I think struggles to know or find its place in its own lineup, which is maybe why I overlook it sometimes, and that is Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit. So this is Wild Turkey, great juice. It's a single barrel product at 101 proof. I struggle to see how it fits in. I mean, you've got the Wild Turkey 101, just standard bourbon. Then you've got the Rare Breed, which is you know much more barrel strength and, and powerful. You've also got the Russell's Single Barrel, which is great. So this one kind of sits in that lower proof, but also single barrel category, which is interesting. But by no means is it a bad whiskey. This one gives me a lot of black licorice and spiciness. It's quite good and I just kind of overlook it because I'm either going for the Russell's Reserve or the Rare Breed or just Wild Turkey 101. But next time I think about Wild Turkey and needing maybe a little bit of that funk or that profile, maybe I'll grab Kentucky Spirit instead. All right, our last two bottles have something in common that isn't just that I overlook them. That's that they come in relatively interesting packaging or boxes. First is Bookers, um, quite simply put, I've got at least three bookers and I rarely break them out. Part of it might be there's just a little bit of barrier. I keep them in the boxes and getting them out is a little bit more of a hassle. Maybe I should take them out of the boxes. But also I just, 
It's a particular profile that I have to be in the right mood for. Still, I should be sipping on them more because each of the batches that I have is really, really good. This one in particular is Charlie's batch from last year, the first one from last year. Really awesome whiskey. And there's no excuse for me to not crack it open more often. Okay, last but not least, we've got another one in a box. This takes us in a totally different direction that I don't often go in and branches out even beyond bourbon. And that is Redbreast 12 Irish Whiskey. So I tend to run in the bourbon circle pretty closely. I have really started to enjoy rye and explore that more and more and I'm loving it. Haven't gotten into international whiskey as much, but I do have this Redbreast 12, which is so good. It's like a snickerdoodle, sugar cookie kind of experience, good cinnamon and lots of vanilla. And man, oh man, again, I just do not crack it open enough and enjoy this pour. I probably need to start doing it. It's also got a strawberry kind of note to it, which is great. So it's one of those lighter international whiskeys that I've really come to enjoy. And again, maybe I just need to get it out of its box and free it up a little bit to be more available to me when I want a good pour. All right, everybody, I think that's gonna do it. Again, let me know in the comments below which ones in your collection are just going maybe a little neglected right now, and why do you think that is? While you're at it, hit the like button on this video, gets it out to the most people. And then also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing that. Helps the channel out a lot, and we're always trying to grow. Plan to release a lot more great content for the rest of 2024 and beyond. Till I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey, maybe take a look at those ones you haven't sipped on in a while, and cheers.